Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leetco. This is question number nine called the palindrome number. So what is it asking? Given an integer x, return true if x is a palindrome and false otherwise. Example one, we have x being 121. This is true whether you read it right to left or left to right. It reads the same number, 121. Example two, we have negative 121. This is going to be false. If we read it left to right, it's going to be negative 121. But if we read it the other way, right to left, this extra sign over here that doesn't read the same way, right? It should have been negative 121. But now if we read it the other way, it's 121 and then negative. So this is not the same, so we output false. Example three, we have our input x being 10. This is gonna be false. If we read it the right way, it's going to be one zero, which is 10. But if we read it the other way, it's going to be zero one, and it's not going to be a valid palindrome. So we output false. And we have some constraints and a follow-up. Could you solve it without converting the integer to a string? Well, first of all, how do we even solve this with the conversion of an integer into a string? Well, if we were to convert it to a string, this problem would become pretty trivial. We just turn it into a string, reverse our entire input, and see if it equals that original input in string form. So if we were to code that out, that would just be returning whether or not string x equals string x reversed. So to reverse it, we'll just do colon colon minus one. If we were to submit this, it would be accepted. But we want to do it without this conversion. So how do we do that? Well, like always, we're going to start off with examples. Say we look at the examples we were actually given in the problem description. So say x equals 10. Why was this false? If we read it left to right, it would be one, then zero. But if we read it right to left, it would be zero, then one. And we know no input integer is going to start off with zero. So anything that ends in a zero would automatically be false, right? Which means any multiple of 10 that we're given is automatically not going to be a palindrome. Any multiple of 10 ends in a zero. And anything that ends in a zero, for it to be a palindrome, it should have started with a zero in the beginning. But since we're given integers as our input, we know it's never going to start with a zero unless it is that number zero. So this is sort of an edge case that we can work with. Any multiple of 10 that's not a zero, we will automatically immediately return false. If we have example two, we have a negative number, negative 121. This is going to apply for all negative numbers. It's not going to read the same either way. There's only one sign that's ever going to be present. So this is going to be another edge case where if we have negative numbers, we're going to return false. So let's actually write those out first. So if x is less than zero, if it is a negative, or if x is a multiple of 10, so x mod 10 equals zero, meaning if we were to divide x by 10, the remainder we get equals zero. And x is not zero, so if this is true and x is not equal to zero, then we want to return false because it's either negative or it's a multiple of 10. So we return false. Now that we have our edge cases, let's look at another example. We have x being 121. This is a palindrome. Why is it a palindrome? It reads the same either way, left to right or right to left. We have one, two, one. And this is possible because this number is mirrored, right? It's mirrored across some center axis point. It's symmetrical about this too. The line of symmetry goes right through this digit over here, number two. It's one, two, one. There's a one on either side of it. And if we were considering numbers that had an even number of digits, so say x equaled one, two, two, one, where would our axis of symmetry be? Where our number is actually being mirrored. So the axis of symmetry here would be between these two twos here, right? It's symmetrical about this axis. Whether we read it left to right or right to left, it's going to read the same thing, one, two, two, one. And that's because both halves are the same if you were to read it from the outside in. So here, up until that line of symmetry, it's going to read one, two. And same thing here, if we read outside in, it's going to read one, two. Which means we don't actually need to reverse our entire input. We just need to split it in half across that mirror center and see if those two halves are equal from the outside in. But we can convert this into a string and just iterate from our two ends. This is an integer, which means we need to work digit by digit. In order to do this, what we can do is make another number called reversed x. Now reversed x is going to start off with zero and say our input x is one, two, two, one. What we're going to do is just strip our input x one digit at a time. So the first thing we're going to do is remove that first one that we see. 
we're going to remove it and add it on to our reverse x. So this is going to be a 1. Now we're going to go back into x, remove the next digit. We're getting rid of that 2 and adding it in over here. And now if we were to compare these two numbers, these two integers are both 12. They're equal, which means this is going to be a palindrome. This will also work if we had an odd number of digits in our integer instead of 1, 2, 2, 1. Say our x was equal to 1, 2, 1. So if x was 1, 2, 1, we're going to start off with x being 1, 2, 1 and our reverse x being 0. We're going to go digit by digit. So we're going to remove this last digit over here, add it to our reverse x. Then we're going to take this digit, remove it, add it over here. Now we want to see if they are equal, right? But 1 doesn't equal 12. But we know this is a palindrome, right? 1, 2, 1 is a palindrome. So how does this work? Well, this digit over here, it doesn't matter what that is. This could have read 181, 191, 121, and this still would have been a palindrome. Since we are mirroring across this digit, it doesn't matter what this digit is. It doesn't need to match anything else. Meaning we can just get rid of it and pretend it's not there. Once we get rid of it, if x equals reversed x, then we know we are a palindrome. So this is the main logic for the approach that we want to use. Now, how do we actually implement this? To cut this up, we know we want to have a reversed x that we'll be comparing against our input x. So let's go ahead and initialize that. Reversed x is going to start off with zero. Now we want to keep stripping numbers off of our input x up until we meet in the middle. But how do we know what the midpoint of our number is? This is not a string where we can take the length and just see what the halfway point is, right? These are digits. So what we're going to do is actually just go until x is greater than our reversed x. Why does this make sense? Again, say x is 121. So we have x being 121 and reversed x being 0. x is greater than our reversed x, which means we can remove a digit from x and add it to our reversed x. This is still the case. x is greater than reversed x. So we're going to do the same thing, getting rid of this 2, adding it over here. Now x is no longer greater than reverse x, so we can make our comparison since this was an odd number of digits. We're going to get rid of this one and just see if these two are equal. Now what if we had 1, 2, 2, 1? The same logic applies. x is greater than reversed x, so we just remove that last digit, add it to reverse x. This is still true. 122 is greater than 1. We're going to remove it, add it over here. This is no longer true. x is no longer greater than our reversed x, which means we can now compare right? We are at our midpoint. But what if x was some other random number? So say our number was 900,001. So x is going to be 900,001 and reversed x is going to be 0. x is greater than reversed x. So we know we want to get rid of one digit and just add it to our reversed x. x is still greater than reversed x. So we're going to repeat the same thing. Remove this last digit, add it over here. This is still true. 9,000 is greater than 10. So this becomes 900. This becomes 100. This is still greater than x, so we're going to continue. We're going to remove another digit and add it over here. Now, x is no longer greater than our reversed x, so we stop and compare these two numbers. These are obviously not equal because this number is not a palindrome, so we're going to stop and return false. But why this works, right? While x is greater than reversed x, because we'll go up until the midpoint or very close to the midpoint if the digits aren't exactly equal, right? If they're skewed with the higher digits being on one side. We might have to go another digit in our loop, make one extra iteration, but we still don't have to cover every single digit in our input. We can stop somewhere along that midpoint. So while x is greater than our reversed x, we want to remove that last digit from x and add it on to our reversed x. So we're going to do reversed x is going to equal itself times 10. So reversed x times 10. And that's just because, say, we wanted to add another digit from x into reverse x. In order to add another digit to the end, we need to make room for it. We need to shift the other digits by another place, right? So we need to multiply it by 10 in order to shift it. And then we're going to add whatever we have in that last digit over here. And the way to get that is to find out what the remainder of x would be if we were to divide by 10. So to this, we are going to add x mod 10. So at this point, we've updated our reversed x to have that extra digit from x, meaning we want to remove it from x. That last digit of x 
we've added to our reverse x. We just want to get rid of it. So we're going to integer divide our x by 10, meaning it's going to get rid of whatever we have in that last place over here. So x is going to equal itself integer divided by 10. And once we're out of this while loop, we're going to have two numbers. We can compare X and reversed X, and we just want to see if they're equal. So we are going to return whether or not X equals reversed X. Either it equals that exactly, or we have an odd number of digits in our input. So we need to see if X equals reversed X integer divided by 10. So we get rid of that last digit in our reversed X, meaning if X was one reversed X was 12, we would just get rid of this and see if these two are equal. And if they are, we would return true. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now before leaving, let's do a walkthrough of our code line by line to see exactly how it works. For our example, say our input is x being 12,321. We're gonna go in this first check. x is not less than zero, nor is it divisible by 10 because x mod 10 is going to equal one. There is going to be a remainder if you were to divide by 10. So since neither of these conditions are true, we don't go in this if statement and we don't return false, which means we are going to go in the next lines of code. We're going to initialize our reversed X to be zero. And we're going to make a check while X is greater than reversed X. This is true. Reversed X is going to equal itself. So zero times 10, which is going to stay zero plus X mod 10. So if we were to divide x by 10, what would our remainder be? That would be one. So we're just adding one to our reversed x. And we are going to integer divide x by 10, meaning we're gonna divide it by 10 and anything that's left over, the remainder's decimals are gonna get dropped, meaning we get rid of this one over here. We go back in this while loop, x is greater than reversed x. So going inside here, reversed x is going to equal itself times 10. So it's one right now, it becomes 10. To it, we're going to add x mod 10. So we're going to add 2 to reversed x, meaning it goes to 12. Now we're going to integer divide x by 10. We're getting rid of this too. We go back in this while loop. x is greater than reversed x. We make the same updates. 12 times 10 is 120. 120 plus x mod 10 is going to be 123. We integer divide x by 10 meaning it is now going to be 12. We can't go back in this while loop. X is no longer greater than reversed X. So we want to return X equaling reverse X. This is not true. 12 does not equal 123. So we're going to go in this or and check if X equals reversed X integer divided by 10. Anytime we integer divide, we're just getting rid of that last digit. So is this equal? This is equal, right? 12 equals 12. So this is a palindrome because our original X input was one, two, three, two, one. If we read it right to left, left to right, it's going to be a palindrome. So we just went ahead and solved palindrome number. If you have any questions whatsoever, let me know down below in the comments. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.